Each and every day, the dollar loses more and more of its value due to inflation. Of course, the Fed is to blame, but I would like to talk a little bit about the history of central banks. One of the first central banks in history was created in France under the direction of John Law. John Law, who lived from 1671 to 1729, published his first principled work on money in 1705, titled, Money and Trade Considered, with a proposal for supplying the nation with money. Later on, in 1716, John Law both founded and headed France's first national central bank, the Bank Royale, and in the course of four short years, from 1716 to 1720, Law almost single-handedly destroyed the French monetary system. A few of John Law's arguments were as followed, quoting from his book of 1705. John Law believes that the king or state in today's political context is the sole owner of the currency. Quote, all the coin of the kingdom belongs to the state, represented in France by the king. It belongs to him in precisely the same way as the high roads do, not that he may appropriate them as his own property, but in order to prevent others from doing so. And as it is one of the rights of the king, and of the king alone, to make changes in the highways for the benefit of the public, of which he or his officers is the sole judge, so it is also one of his rights to change the gold or silver coin into other exchange tokens of greater benefit to the public. Unquote. The idea that the king or the state is the sole owner of a person's money is completely absurd. It is an elitist viewpoint if there ever was one, that the money you have is only in your possession because the state or the king has permitted you to have it, but John Law's position gets worse from there. John Law also advocates that the state have the power to take from you your money and property if it feels it's not being put to good use for the society, and even proposes getting rid of hard money and replacing it with paper currency quoting from the same book as listed above. As the coin of gold or silver bears the image of the prince or some other public mark, and as those who keep this coin under lock and key regard it as exchange tokens, the prince has every right to compel them to surrender it, as failing to put this good to its proper use. The prince has this right even over goods which are your own property, and he can compel you to sow your land, and repair your houses on pain of losing them. Because, at bottom, your goods are yours only on condition that you use them in a manner advantageous to the community. But, in order to avoid the searches and the confiscations of money, it would be better to go at once to the source of evil, and to give men only that kind of money which they will not be tempted to hoard, that is paper money. Unquote. Does any of this sound familiar? It sounds like Keynesianism, doesn't it? That's because it basically is Keynesianism. John Law was the original creator of the system of Keynesian economics. The only reason John Maynard Keynes gets the credit is because he was in the right place at the right time to express these very same ideas with his general theory. The truth tends to upset many so-called progressives that cling to these very same principles. This is even further proven in John Law's stance on hoarding, and the supposed harm it creates. Quote, Trade depends on money. A greater quantity employs more people than a lesser quantity. A limited sum can only set a number of people to work proportion to it, and tis with little success laws are made for employing the poor or idle in countries where money is scarce. Good laws may bring money to full circulation tis capable of, and force it to those employments that are most profitable to the country. But no laws can make it go further, nor can people be sent to work without more money to circulate so as to pay the wages of a greater number." Unquote. He stresses the point of monetary circulation, and works from the assumption that wealth exists in one fixed amount, and cannot be created by the market. This is of course completely silly, I point all of this out to prove two simple points. The first being that these ideas were being expressed back in 1705, so how can a Keynesian call himself a progressive? Let's remember that the word progressive means moving forward, or a person who believes in moving towards the future. So how can a person who touts beliefs from 300 years ago call themselves a progressive? They can. From a historical perspective, it is quite clear that modern-day progressives are not progressives at all, but are in fact scam artists looking to pass down their outdated, elitist beliefs down the political tubes and into public policy. The second point is that you cannot accept the idea of a central bank without accepting the notion of monopoly. 
Interestingly enough, government spokespeople and economists argue that government regulation is needed to prevent monopolies from forming and robbing the public through shady business practices, but argue the case that a monopolized bank with regulatory power over other banks, at the same time, is needed. The hypocrisy is just too much to bear. I don't know if this is truly the product of a grand conspiracy, or sheer stupidity, that a scholar could contradict himself so sharply in that manner. To me, it's further proof that the world is doomed to burn in a black flame before anything ever changes. What do you think?